So if you guys didn't know, what you just finished watching is the bottom palm. I'm going to be showing you the bottom palm. Not the top palm, not a side steal, but a bottom palm. So if you don't have a bottom hand, how would I say that? Let me talk about the bottom palm a little bit. The, the bottom palm I learned from Ernest Eric in a book called By Forces Unseen. And for a long time, it was widely regarded as the hardest card magic book in the in universe. universe. Hmm. But in there, he does a bottom palm and uh, I was having trouble with it. And I kind of changed some things around and came up with this bottom palm that I'm going to show you now and that you already saw. So if you want to look more into it, you can look at Ernest Eric by Forces Unseen. And there's, I'm sure there's plenty of stuff around too. I'm going to Vegas for Magic Live. I'm going to be out there with my boys, Ramsey and, and all those other guys. And we're going to be hanging out at the convention in Vegas, Las Vegas. And then after that, I will be in Texas for T-A-O-M. So I'll be lecturing out there. So if you guys like what I'm doing, just give me a thumbs up, hit that like button, subscribe if you want to, and uh, hit the bell if you want to be notified when I put up my next video. It just helps me out and lets me know that you guys like what I'm doing. So anyway, let's get this to -la 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 started. So I'm going to briefly show you uh, the two bottom palms that we're going to be going over and then I will break down each one of them. So the first one is a one card or multiple card palm from the, the full deck, which looks like this. And then there's the palm from a small group, one, two, three, or four cards or whatever. This is that palm. They're technically the same, but there are some differences that make one Easy, harder if you try to do it the other way for the other. I don't, I don't even know if that's English, but you get what I mean. You know what I'm saying, guys. Okay, you know you know what I'm saying. Don't. Sorry for that mild outburst. Allow me to continue with this tutorial. Let's start with one card or multiple cards from the deck. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, it's going to be easier to do multiple cards in the beginning than it is going to be to do one card. I just found that it's easier to control a thicker block than it is to control one card. So step one is going to be palming a card. So just take a card and just put it in the palm of your hand, like if you're going to palm it normally. And the reason why is you have to remember this spot. You have to remember what that spot feels like because you have to place the deck in that position. So if you're going to do the full deck palm, instead of placing the deck in a normal mechanics grip and then trying to bottom palm from this location, the card is coming from the bottom of the deck. So it's going to be too low in your palm if you try to do it like this. So you have to raise up the deck so that the cards that you're palming are in that position before you start. I know it's kind of weird, but that's that's what this entails if you're going to do it my way. And, and you're doing it my way. Sorry for that mild outburst. Allow me to continue with the tutorial. So, start by uh, you know putting the deck in that position and then getting a break on a few cards. It doesn't matter how many right now, just a few. Your index finger is then going to roll over to the corner of the deck because this is going to stabilize the entire deck while you're palming. So you keep it there. And now your pinky is going to pull back and your ring finger and middle finger are going to extend. Now, this is really hard to do slow. So, you know, the cards are kind of flying everywhere because it's not meant to be in that position for very long. So once you pull the cards back, then your ring finger and middle finger can relax and you've pretty much palmed the card at this point. Uh, you don't have to think too much about it. Keep in mind, the way that this works is that the pinky can stretch without the ring finger moving too much. A lot of people, when they try to move their pinky, their, their ring finger is like attached, which is not true. It's just a matter of getting used to individually moving your fingers like this, right? If you notice while I'm doing this, I get my break and now my ring finger then rolls around the edge while my pinky is pulling back. And then I just relax my hand. Once you do that, you can then contact the edge with the pinky, or you could leave it just like this. It's fine, nobody's gonna see this at this point. The whole idea is to do this with as, with as minimal finger walking as possible. You don't wanna do something like this, where you pull the card and then, you know, you're like, too much. You don't wanna do that. 
Okay. You don't. You don't want to. You don't want to do. It. I'm sorry for that mild outburst. Allow me to continue with the tutorial. Let's say you've controlled a, a group of cards. However you want to get a break on those cards is fine. The next finger comes over, fingers pull back, then the middle finger rolls around the edge and you're now in bottom palm. I've been doing this for a bunch of years already so it's kind of easy for me to get into. In the beginning, it's going to be super hard to get those cards dislodged from your index finger. It's hard for me to explain without you doing it. So if you're not holding a deck of cards and doing this, you should probably do that now. But it's hard for me to, to tell you exactly what it feels like to get that small packet of cards out and around from the bottom of the deck. Once you get your break on cards, this bottom block of cards that you're going to palm has to bend down. If it bends up, you're not going to be able to palm the cards. So you have to make sure that these cards bend in towards the palm as you're doing the palm. If they bend out, you're, you're not going to be able to palm the cards. It's just what it is. And then once you get to this point, you just square the deck or pull the deck away or whatever. And you can let this hand just kind of dip down and do whatever. So, so that's going to be one of the hardest beginning steps is just feeling the card disconnect and bending in towards the palm. Also keep in mind, if you're not able to separate your ring from your middle finger when you're doing this, it's gonna be extremely hard to palm this as well because it's just gonna get caught up by the ring finger. So you have to make sure, you know, you'll, you'll, be, you'll be doing this. And then you'll have to re-extend and walk. So it, it's gonna take time to stretch this finger from this finger, but it's something you just have to get, get used to, you know, you have to get used to moving that ring finger and pinky separately. Uh, from the top, you're going to pull down with your ring finger, pull the cards back, the ring finger rolls around the edge of the deck and you're pretty much in palm from there. You don't have to bend the card all the way in, right there is fine. And I'll explain angles later on. Uh, now, if you've ever read the Ernest Eric book from here, he would take his thumb, he would actually pivot the entire deck and hand it to somebody with one hand, which is a very daring thing to do. And if you could pull it off, please, that you should. That's amazing. Really boost that, that feeling of being able to accomplish something in magic. Just practice doing that with a few cards. Now, once you get through a few cards, now you can start doing one card. And the reason why one card is for me more difficult is because it feels like there's no tension. It just feels like you're palming a string. And it's really weird because it's so thin. Once you understand how to do it with a few cards, you know how to do it with one card and you can just play around with that and get used to that as well. I'm only using two cards for now. We'll go into more cards later on, but I think two cards is a good beginner spot to, to do this. Now this palm differs in, in a lot of ways because you don't have to support an entire deck. You're literally just holding two cards and at one point just one. This is going to work the same way. The cards start in the bottom palm, you kind of lever them up into the grip you're going to hold, the mechanics grip or whatever, and here's where you're going to start the palm. So unlike the last one, you had to hold a break. With this one, you don't. Instead, you're going to pinch, which sounds really weird, but that's exactly what's going to happen. You're going to hold the cards in this grip. Your thumb is going to come down and pinch against the base of the index finger and then your thumb is gonna separate it just a little bit. Now your pinky's gonna come in and pull back, and then your ring finger can palm the card. Now, if you notice what my fingers were doing, that, that's gonna be very important later when I explain the cover for, for this action. Otherwise, for now, just, th just watch. I'll do it this way so you can see it. Your thumb is gonna separate and pinch, then your pinky pulls back, and then your fingers just close. Now you see there wasn't a lot of movement here, and at one point, my fingers were kind of straight out like this. That's gonna be your covering action. So if you point, if you were to say, can you do me a favor, hold out your hand, you can palm the card in the action of pointing at a spectator's hand to hold out. So if you do me a favor, just hold out your hand and then you place the card in their hand. So it's something to keep in mind when you're doing this. The covering action is gonna be completely different. The timing is gonna be different. And even the action is different. With the, with the deck, you're holding this here, you're pulling this back, and this has to stay in that position, right? But with this, you can, you can be free. You can move your hand. You can do things to get that card into palm. So let's just slowly start here. So in the corner, your index finger is gonna hold the top edge of the cards. 
you're gonna pinch with your thumb, pull back, index, and then the pinky's gonna pull back. Now, while this is happening, if you notice, my index finger isn't on this corner, it's actually next to the card as I'm palming. And my fingers are straight out. My ring finger, my index, and, and my middle finger are straight out. And once the card is hitting that spot, all they have to do is curl closed and the card is palmed. And then I can move my finger up. I can do whatever I want with my finger after that. For all intents and purposes, this card is now successfully palmed. By the way, for those who are asking what this move is, this is uh, a move called treading and it's in a book called If an Octopus Could Palm by Dan and Dave. It's a nice little palm drill. And it's how this palm for me was developed from, from a few cards. It was just doing this drill over and over. If I wanted to palm every card except the top card, it would be the exact same way. So I would just hold that group in that, in that position, pinch, pull back with my fingers, and now every single card underneath the top card is palmed. And you can actually do it the other way as well. If you want to palm just one card, just hold, th then you would hold a little break and you would do the exact same thing as the, as the deck palm with a small group. Play with that. And uh, in the meantime, we're going to go into the angles of this palm. And I'm going to show you something interesting that'll help you cover it, especially for those people who say that they have small hands. All right, so let's get into the angles of this palm because uh, I, I don't think a bottom palm is that angly once you have the card in palm. I think it's more angly when you're doing it. And if you do it incorrectly, you're just telling everybody you're doing it. Technically, this palm was developed to be done at a card table. So if there was a card table here, this would be the best technical angle for the palm. Because from here, there's no flashing of the cards whatsoever. You might see a little finger flutter because I have to move them for a second. But otherwise, there's nothing else that tells you that a palm has taken place. Right? Think about that when you're thinking about the angles of the palm. Basically, the angle is going to be from the crotch of the thumb to the index finger. That flat area out is the best angle to do a bottom palm. If I wanted to change the angle and do it towards you, how could, how could this be done, right? And it's actually quite simple. Instead of trying to just bang this out invisibly in front of you, all I have to do is pick up the deck. So from here, I would just get ready, go to pick up the deck, put it down, and palm the cards on the way instead of trying to do the whole thing invisibly here and then get caught. So blocking or the action of grabbing the cards is actually really good cover to palm out from the bottom. So I'm gonna palm some cards in my hand and then I'm gonna show you guys something for those people who say that maybe palming cards is too hard because their hands are small. I understand there's gonna be some limitations for people with super small hands, but realistically, I want you guys to see something. So from this position, you really can't see anything, but if I were to turn my hand, if you notice, my fingers are spread wide open I have my, in, my pinky holding one and my middle finger holding the other. My fingers are just wide open. But if I turn my hand, angle up just a little bit, and then throw the deck in my hand, there is nothing to see. It doesn't even feel like I'm holding cards in my palm. It just feels like I'm just here doing whatever. And I, I technically am, but I have that freedom. The strength of a bottom palm is that it's, when you understand how to use it and when to use it, it is a serious, serious weapon for card handlers. Because, I mean, look at this. If I just come here and I square up, right? I have cards palm now. I could do whatever I want. You know, four aces, their selection, whatever. All right there. Very quickly, very silently, and with almost no cover. Just me grabbing the cards. I can get cards into palm. With one card, I mean, with this like two card thing, it's pretty much the same thing. So you just reach forward, you say, hold out your hand for me, and, and I'm gonna back up so I can come into the focus point. But if I do this and I say, hold out your hand for me, there's, it still doesn't feel like I'm palming anything on the way. I'm just kind of pointing at you. So I go here, just, uh, just hold out your hand for me, and I give him the card, and you're in that perfect kind of sweet spot. Because if you think about it, this position that I'm pointing at, right is the exact same position when i'm doing it this way so this is this so this angle is now the same as all the other angles and you can cover it like that you just put the card in the other hand so think about that when you're practicing this stuff play with your angles look at it in the mirror grab a camera like this or your phone every phone has a camera and just record yourself doing these actions and you'll find the angles that's best for your hand 
So that is the bottom palm. That is all of the bottom palm. All of it. <laughs> That's it. I don't got anything else to say about it. That's the bottom palm. But if you want to learn more about it, please check out Ernest Eric's book. Check out, you know, I'm sure Marlo and Vernon and lots of other people have work on bottom palm. Check out that. Find out what works for you. For Find out what works for your hand. Not everybody's going to get the best thing out of the palm, but with some of the touches I talked about with angles, maybe you could get away with it a little bit. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to be in Vegas next week. I'll be at Magic Live with my homies chilling up in, this, in the d desert. <laughs> it's so damn hot. It is so damn hot. Why doesn't Vegas turn down the heat? Huh? Why? Can you, uh, anybody from Vegas, can you tell me? Why don't you turn down the heat? Why does it have to be so hot? I'm, I'm a big dude. Okay. I got, I got some stuff that I need to cool down because this is very, it holds heat and I'm going to the heat and it's hot. Just turn it down. Just 80, 90 degrees. Give me 90 degrees or 32 Celsius. I don't know Celsius. So after Magic Live at the end of August, I'll be in Texas for TAOM. I'll be lecturing out there. So if I don't get to see you in Vegas, maybe I'll see you in Texas. And, uh, and that's about it. But also I got some shirts too that I'm selling for a limited time. So if you want some dope shirts that I did on my own, I did it all on my own. Nobody helped me. You can do that. It just supports me, man. It just helps me keep doing this for you guys because I love doing this. And I try to put out the best that I can for you guys and give you some dope things to play with. So other than that, I'm going to break out of here. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for all the support and love. Peace out. Yatta!